Hi, uh, my name is Gordon Smith. I'm the product manager for Oracle REST Data Services. I've created a series of quick briefings on the major new features in uh, Oracle REST Data Services 3.0 release. Um, and in this video, I'm going to give uh, a, a, an overview of each one real quickly so you can see which one you're interested in seeing more of. And also, for those of you who, who are not familiar with Oracle REST Data Services, I'm going to go through a few slides of some of the basic capabilities of that. So in ORGS 3.0, there are um, four major feature areas. Uh, the first one is support for multiple data stores. Um, Oracle REST Data Services has always supported access to relational data in the Oracle database. Um, what, what is new in ORGS 3.0 is support for actually accessing JSON data in the Oracle Database 12C release using a uh, API called SODA, which stands for Simple Oracle um, Document Access API. Uh, ORS 3.0 also supports access to data that's uh, stored in the Oracle NoSQL database. So you now have three uh, choices for a uh, data store, uh, each very different, each has uh, very, strength, very uh, strong capabilities for particular use cases, so you have a lot more options now and a, a much more broader range of capabilities for uh, data stores than before. The next area of functionality is uh, auto enablement and query filters. This is the major enhancement area for access to relational data in the Oracle database. So auto enablement allows you to uh, automatically generate support for about a dozen uh, basic single table operations for the tables you want to set this up for. Uh, these are things like um, ability to do basic queries, ability to do basic inserts, updates, deletes, accessing metadata on tables, and that sort of thing. The query filters provide ways to define simple predicates and uh, basic sort functions um, using JSON instead of uh, SQL. So it's kind of a mini SQL kind of capability, but in JSON for those developer, developers who are comfortable working in JSON and may not want to take on uh, learning SQL. The next area is a new installation wizard that makes it really easy to um, set up ORDs in a standalone environment, which is a great environment for doing um, development and also testing. Uh, and then the last area is uh, OAuth 2 security. Uh, ORDs uh, has supported OAuth 2 uh, security standard for some time, but what is new is in ORDs 3.0 support is it, the support is more comprehensive, and particularly there is support for a, uh, a, a flow called client credentials, which is uh, will probably be very widely used for uh, most enterprise applications, which is a common uh, use case for the Oracle database. So those are the, the four uh, other videos that you may want to take a look at. For those of you who are not familiar with Oracle REST Data Services, let me give you the basics. Uh, let me uh, minimize my little picture here. So ORS uh, is a great way of setting up REST connectivity to now multiple Oracle data stores. As I described already, you can uh, use it to get to relational data in the Oracle database or JSON documents in the Oracle uh, database 12C release and uh, now also access to Oracle NoSQL database. The advantages of REST, uh, you can get at REST from any client. Any client that supports HTTP, which uh, I'm not aware of a client that doesn't support HTTP, so just about anything. Um, Oracle supports uh, SQL drivers for many popular language environments, but it, it tends to be a fairly high bar for us to, to introduce, a, uh, go through the, the effort and the investment necessary to support a driver. So any Sometimes there are new, very innovative languages, for example, one that's out now called Go from Google. Uh, we, are, we have not yet developed a driver for that uh, from Oracle, um, but uh, though that language and many other new innovative languages, you can use REST to get at Oracle with using, using ORDS. Nice property of, of, of REST and nice property of ORDS is that it's stateless. So that provides a very sound internet-focused architecture for high availability and scalability. Basically what REST does is it takes the basic principles that made the web such a success and, and brings them uh, into the world for connectivity for other things, other uses, and in this case, accessing data stores. 
And Oracle is strongly committed to REST. Uh, last count, there was over 60 product teams within Oracle, not just the database group, but within middleware, within applications area. Th throughout Oracle, you see products being developed using REST more and more all the time. And a key thing about um, ORDS is that it, 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 it's really focused around JSON, using JSON with REST. So we use JSONs for both input, using query filters, for example, and for out output. And uh, JSON is a, is, is a very popular way for representing data, and it's a great way to, uh, to ingest data on, on the, for clients. Uh, it's very easy to map to objects, uh, certainly in JavaScript. Uh, J uh, JSON stands for uh, JavaScript Object Notation. But other languages like Java and many other languages, it, it's a very natural fit uh, for uh, mapping to and from object uh, notations. Drilling down a little bit more in REST itself, REST stands for um, uh, represent representational state transfer. Uh, some key concepts behind that is it models resources, not actions. Uh, it's not just an RPC mechanism, or it's, it really draws on some of the, the key principles of uh, uh, the web, particularly that you use URIs to, to model resources that you want to get at. And then you support a, a fixed set, a limited set of verbs perform, for performing operations on those resources. So things like get for doing queries, post for doing inserts, put for doing updates, deletes for doing deletes. Um, another key part of it is state transitions are communicated with hyperlinks. As you see some of the examples we'll be showing of using ORDs, you see as well as returning data from the database, uh, in, typically in a JSON format, it also returns hyperlinks. So these hyperlinks allow you to do things like drill down to get at, at more detailed data, or drill up to get more metadata about the objects you're looking at, or for pagination, or for other uses. So you'll see a lot of links, hyperlinks, embedded in the data, and that's for being able to get at other things. So drilling down a little bit, the way ORDS uh, is architected, ORDS is a uh, mid-tier application. It's written in Java. It runs in uh, Java J2EE environments, uh, like WebLogic, like Tomcat. It also has a standalone mode, which is used for, it's a very nice environment for use for development and also testing. And basically what it does is it takes HTTP requests, takes the URIs and maps them, maps them to handlers written in uh, the data store language like SQL uh, to, for getting at relations uh, in uh, the Oracle database. Uh, it processes, binds uh, variables, parameters that may be specified in URI in the uh, body of, let's say, a post request or in a query string. Uh, it binds those to data store languages like SQL. It processes the, the query or the update or whatever it's done and then takes the result set that might be returned and converts it into a format that the client wants to deal with, which often may be a JSON format. ORDS works for both on-premise uh, deployments, uh, and it's also a great environment for working with the cloud. So the Oracle Cloud uses JSON quite extensively for returning data to clients, and also uh, for enhanced integration with Oracle, SaaS, and other uh, platforms as, as a service facility as well. So it's a great environment for cloud applications as well as on-premise. So now the next step is to take a, a deeper look uh, and go into one of the four uh, uh, drill down um, uh, quick briefings on the different topics which I described. Thanks. <laughs>